All right, welcome to a video all about my own personal journey with fitness. We're gonna get into how I became a personal trainer, how I became a business owner. And as you can see, I'm just sitting on my bedroom floor. I've got comfy socks on because I decided to skip the gym today. I'm getting lots of creative work done. So I was like, I don't have time to film this video today. And I've got a little over 45 minutes before a call I need to hop on. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to overthink this video. All I have to do is tell my story. So I don't need my laptop. I don't need bullet points. So I figured I'd just hop on the floor, get comfy, and talk about myself. Which, I'm going to be honest, I'm not someone who likes to talk about themselves. I'm trying to get more comfortable just in general, like having conversations in my life and holding on to conversations. And if someone asks me a question about myself, like trying not to immediately brush it off. Um, so yeah, get uncomfortable. Get, what is it? Get comfortable being uncomfortable. <laughs> you get what I'm saying. But let's hop right into it. I'm going to start by talking about my own personal fitness journey because obviously you have to start your own personal fitness journey if you are going to become a coach. Um, so that is what happened with me in college. I had access to a free, I'm gonna say free because I paid for college tuition. Well, my parents, very fortunate my parents were able to pay for my college tuition, um, but we had a free gym membership there. So my husband Cole and I, we've been dating since, or we've been together. <laughs> we started dating when I was about to turn 19. So it's been a long time. Um, and he was very athletic in high school, childhood growing up. So he would go to the gym um, when we had access to it in college. And he was starting to get like back into it. You know, since high school, I feel like after people graduate, they kind of lose that side of themselves, like, because there's no, like, there's not as much organized sports in college um, that you probably would participate in. So some people, like, kind of fall off with that. So I think he was getting back into fitness and trying to, you know, get a routine going, and we decided to start going to the gym together. We went to UCSB, shout out Gauchos, um, and so we just kind of got into it, and I just noticed things were coming naturally to me. I honestly didn't really grow up playing sports at all. Um, and I just noticed I was enjoying it. I kind of tapped in easily with like the mind body connection, knowing what muscles I should be feeling and engaging them. And then as part of the, like, I guess part of the tuition was you got to go to some free classes, I think but I do remember taking some classes and they were group classes and I don't really remember exactly what they were, but I kind of remember being introduced to some sort of weight training and then a lot of like mat work, you know, with a band, like a resistance band that you put around your knees. So I remember in the class just kind of getting it. Like if the teacher told us something about a, a exercise cue or some sort of form critique, it just kind of clicked for me. Um, so yeah, I, not to toot my own horn, but I felt like I was good at it from the get-go and just kind of understood the body when it came to fitness. Um, so yeah, I started working out more, getting more into that and my own personal journey. Friends started even noticing, like, hey, you're looking really good, you're looking strong. So I, definitely was starting to develop consistency and just started loving it. Like it wasn't just about, you know, the physical aspects of it, but I just loved that empowered feeling and that confidence I gained from working out and the energy, that drive. Um, so after that, you know, fast forward a couple of years and graduated from college, Cole and I moved in together into this tiny little studio and I I started my own Instagram 
like separate from my personal one in 2012. I'm almost positive it was 2012 because I remember when we like first moved into that studio in June 2012. I feel like I started that Instagram then and started following the, I'm talking about my Caspiration Instagram. Um, so separate from my personal one. And I started following like Kayla Itziness. She was like the first fitness influencer, I swear, like on Instagram probably. Um, and then I followed, you know, just some of like the bigger names that are like exploding now. They have their own multi-million dollar companies and just highly successful. So it was a very small like niche of fitness influencers. That's basically what it was. But one person that I followed was very successful with a certain company. I'm not going to name the name. You can probably guess it. Um, that was a like fitness workout company where you follow along with their workouts. Probably don't need to say much more than that, but she was a coach through them. Um, and I just, I could see she was so successful. So I was like, hey, I can do this. Like, this is something I wanna do. I was working at a law firm at the time that I, I had uh, a job at a law firm in college. And after I graduated, I just kept that job. Obviously you need income. Um, so I was still there, but I was like, I don't know if the desk life is for me. Like, obviously I'm still gonna keep that job, but I wanna see if there's some other avenue that I'm not exploring. So when I saw how successful she was with this company and basically just selling their programs, I, you know, was new to fitness, maybe had been working out a couple years. And obviously, even though I had developed consistency in my own life, I wasn't coaching people yet. I didn't even know that that's really what I wanted to do yet. Um, I was just really enjoying it and saw the success that this person was having. And so I signed up under her and yes, it is one of those companies where it is a pyramid. Um, <laughs> not going to talk down on it, but that was the situation. So freshly out of college, decided to try that and... I had this Catspiration, actually, I think it was like Catspiration 17 underscore. I th actually, someone did have Catspiration underscore or just Catspiration. Why did I add the 17? I don't know. But, you know, numbers were like way bigger that, back then. Um, so I had this Instagram. So I became a coach through this company where you sell their video workout programs to other people. So I say coach because I literally did not have to prove anything, that I was certified in anything, that I had any experience in literally coaching fitness anything. They don't ask you that whatsoever. Um, so I had zero experience with coaching and decided to try this, like take a leap of faith, yay, go me. And it just was not my thing. It wasn't my thing. I was spending money, not making money. Um, so I thought that was very bizarre. Um, and I was trying, believe me, like I was getting out of my comfort zone. I am an introvert at heart. And when I, I'll get down, I'll get to it later down the uh, road on this story. But when I started my job at a studio in Santa Barbara where I had my first, well, my kind of second hands-on training experience, that's when I really came out of my shell. So imagine like uh, at least three years earlier trying to do this, trying to sell people programs when I had zero experience. I had never been a coach. I had no hands-on training, nothing. And even though I'm just selling workout programs that someone else has created, I still was way out of my element. Like I give myself props for trying because I was way out of my comfort zone. So I realized it was just not for me. And honestly, like I, when I uh, did the workout programs that that company offered, like I enjoyed it, but it wasn't really, it was more like high intensity kind of stuff. It wasn't for me. 
but I envision myself like making workout videos someday. And I was like, why? Like, I don't want to sell someone else's program. That was in 2012 where I was like, why am I selling someone else's program when like my dream is to create and be like my own business owner. So I already had those thoughts like 11 years ago, um, which is pretty cool to think back and like reflect back on that. Um, but going back to the Instagram, I forgot to mention, like when I started being a coach through this certain company, I would make little like videos and posts on Instagram. And again, like props to me, I, I don't know if people in my life were like, what the hell is she doing? But like, or maybe they're like, oh, that's a great motivational page. Like I have no idea. I could care less. Um, couldn't care less, <laughs> but yeah, I, <laughs> I, it was like little workout demonstrations and like a picture of my dumbbells with my shoes next to it. And like, you know, trying to be motivational, whatever. Like I, I really look back and I'm like, oh, that was endearing. But I also was, you know, trying to spread a positive message and just share parts of my journey and just inspire people to, you know, be them, be their best selves. So, um, I've always kind of been this way, I guess. But when I realized that was not going to happen and I like canceled that whole thing, realized I was the one spending money, not making money, like it felt very forced and I really didn't feel like I had any guidance at all on how to try to sell these programs to people. And it just felt wrong. Like I am not a salesy person. I say this all the time. I don't like cold calling. I don't, or uh, like cold selling and DMs. I don't like hopping onto a sales call and like trying to pressure people to do that. Like I don't do that. So it felt very much like that, like very forced, very salesy. And I was like, after two months, I think max two months, I was like, this is not for me. So that was that. I continued working at the law firm. I transferred over or I got another job at a hospital in Santa Barbara and thought I would like, thought I had made it. Like I was like, I'm going to get so many benefits and I am going to be making money. I'm going to climb my way up this ladder. Hell no. I started in March of 2014 and by June 2014, I was absolutely miserable. And that's only like the course of three months. Like I was miserable, like from day one, it is, it was not for me. So I realized very quickly that that just wasn't going to be the job for me, no matter where else I ended up. But in 2014, I started training a couple of girlfriends. Well, I think I started training. Yeah, I started training or leading little workouts with my friends at like one of the big houses that we always used to hang out at because they knew I was into my own fitness and everything. Um, so I started having little like workouts where I would lead it. And it probably maybe happened like five or six times max, but it was fun just like training my friends and we'd all work out together in the yard or in the house, whatever it was. Um, and then from there, I had three girls who were like a friend of a friend who I think they reached out to me or my friend told me that they were interested in having like a coach. So pretty sure I charged like $10 for each of them every single time. But when you're starting off, it's like, okay, whatever, that's 10 bucks from each person. That's 30 bucks from a session, like cool. Um, and by this point I had gotten certified because when my friends started asking me like, hey, will you lead us in a workout? I was like, I better get certified like just for liability reasons. And I could see that this was something that I wanted to pursue. I could tell this was a path I definitely wanted to go down. Had no idea where it would lead, but I knew I wanted to venture down that path. So I got certified through, I don't know, I did some research online and like picked a organization that I could afford. Um, but it was a great, great certification to start with. It was just a personal training certification. Um, and then I started training these three girls and it was over the course of several months, I believe. And I was working at the hospital and I would train them after work like two times a week. So, you know, getting home pretty late, like 7.30 or so, and then going back to work the next morning. So those were kind of long days, but that didn't last too long. It was maybe, yeah, I would say I trained them maybe for like max, a, like a year. Um, but that was how I first started training clients. I mean, they were clients, they were paying clients, even though it was $10 a session for each of them. Um, 
And then slowly, no, not slowly, quickly started getting even more miserable in my job and realized I had to do something about it. Like I could not stay in this corporate position. I was miserable going to work. I didn't sleep at night. Like talk about the Sunday scaries. Like every weekend, it was so bad. I even remember like I had a trip home um, like three months into the job, like home to see my parents. And I just like burst out into tears. Like I had to have this huge release. Like I was miserable. So by 20, well, it took another year. So 20, 15, I think in June or July, I went to Tahoe with my parents. We had like a little family vacay. And I told my mom, I just couldn't do it anymore. Like we were talking. She's like, how are you doing? I know it's horrible. And I, I was like, I've been there a year and like three months. I just cannot do this anymore. And I was like, I, I don't care if I have to take a pay cut. I need to make a huge change. And I am being called to like go down this path with fitness and just see what happens. I was at the point where I didn't care if my pay was cut in half. I was so miserable at that desk job that I just had to do something drastically different. So I started applying to a bunch of studios in Santa Barbara. I didn't want to apply to a commercial gym because I really didn't know like how it, to me, it seemed like with a big gym, you would be, if you were a personal trainer there, you would get like the people who are just signing up for memberships and they get like that complimentary personal training session. I don't know if that's how most gyms operate. I truly don't know. I've only worked for a small studio. So I wasn't interested in that. And I had done like a boot camp studio in Santa Barbara. And so I kind of was more into that vibe. So I went around and applied to a bunch of like boot camp studios and, you know, just small, like privately owned studios. And got a couple interviews and one of them was with the um the studio that I ended up with for six and a half years almost six and a half years yeah and it was the best decision ever because it gave me hands-on experience I learned a shit ton from my boss the owner who has like a BA and master's in exercise science and just all of that stuff that is like very in-depth um she taught me so much, challenged me, uh, and I learned so much about the human body. I have so much hands-on experience. I have worked with people from age 12 to 82. Like, that's a big span. People with all different injuries, back, knee, neck, uh, Achilles, like, you name it, any injuries um, and doing personal training sessions and, um, teaching thousands of boot camps. Like I, I tried to do the math, um, earlier and to like see how many boot camp classes I've actually taught. And I, I can't even do the math. Um, but it is probably in the thousands. So I am so grateful for that opportunity. I am so grateful for all the hands-on experience, all the different types of people I've gotten to work with, all the different bodies I've gotten to work with, all the different goals. And with that job, so it was a boot camp studio, but it was also a private training studio. So I was a personal trainer and a boot camp instructor. I started more with the boot camp uh, uh, in 2015. And then when someone, when the second personal trainer, so my boss was the personal trainer. And then her sister was a personal trainer. Um, everyone else was just boot camp instructors. When her sister left to pursue a different career, I moved into the role of personal trainer. And that's where I got all my one-on-one -on -one clients. Um, so from 2016, I think April is when I became a personal trainer through the same studio. So it started to shift from, you know, four or five boot camp classes a day to more private clients and then by the time you know the last few years that I was working there up until we moved to uh Oregon in December of 2021 I stayed up stayed with the gym the whole time that we lived in Santa Barbara up until then um by the end I was doing basically all personal training and maybe teaching a class here and there for the boot camp um so it was great to kind of have that evolution definitely enjoy teaching uh one-on-one -on -one much more um, but loved what I did. I am certified in nutrition coaching, which I've been since 2015. 
So I did sit down personal, um, sit down nutrition consultations one-on-one -on -one. every time we had like a person who was trying out the gym, we gave them a complimentary nutrition consultation. So just diving deep into their nutrition habits, their nutrition goals, their physique goals, whatever it is, uh, health goals, like if they need to, you know, change their diet to for longevity and preventative measures. So I would sit down with each person and go over in depth their nutrition and how we can like tweak it to make small changes and just help them in that regard as well. So I am incredibly grateful for that job. Um, it is why I am where I am today. And I have so much gratitude for my boss who brought me on, taught me. And like looking back at like picturing myself working out at the gym at UCSB when I first started my own fitness journey and like where I was even like a few years into working at the studio, like the level of knowledge. I know I was like brand new into my own fitness journey and like just kind of, you know, scoping out a gym and all that I had to offer, but like all of this hands-on experience and education, like certifications shouldn't matter, but I do have like six certifications under my belt and I have re-upped them. You know, I have my personal training certification. I have re-upped every two to three years. Um, my nutrition coaching one, I have re-upped every couple of years. Um, so, so much knowledge I have gained and just working with people, like working with different bodies and injuries and limitations and different goals. Like it really expands your knowledge and your expertise. And there is never going to be a stopping point. Like I am always going to keep learning and educating myself and learning from people, learning from coaches, learning from clients. Like there is never going to be an ending point to like stopping this education, which is the cool part. Um, but yeah, just looking back on like me beginning my own fitness journey in like 2009, 2010 maybe, and then fast forward all those years and just to see the experience I have gained is wild. And I'm so incredibly grateful. And like, not only am I grateful for the experience and the knowledge that I have, but I am so grateful for the people I have met, not only like coworkers and like I said, my boss who taught me basically everything I know um, and just clients I've gotten to work with. Like some of my personal training clients I've had since 2016. And I am so fortunate that they still trust me with their fitness journey today and even on Zoom. Like they could be back in the studio one-on-one -on -one with someone and they choose to continue with me even though I moved out of state and they have to see me over a screen. Like I feel incredibly blessed. So I am so grateful if you're listening and you're one of my clients or you have been in the past, like I love you, thank you so much. Um, so yeah, that is basically how I became a personal trainer all that good stuff, but let's get into how I started my own business. So like I said, in 2012 or whatever, um, when I was that coach through that certain organization, I like, I could envision myself doing my own thing creatively and, or being like some sort of coach in a certain regard. Like I didn't want to work for somebody else. Like clearly that was like me envisioning something in the future, like making those workout videos myself, like I was saying. Um, and even when I got the job at the studio that I worked at for over six years in Santa Barbara, I knew when I, like I had a conversation with my boss very early on. I think we had um, a evaluation like at the end of the year. So I started in August, I believe. And then in December at the end of the year, or maybe it was like early January, we had an like end of the year evaluation. And she was always good about asking like, where do you want to be? Where can you see yourself? You know, how can I help you and challenge you to be the best coach that you can be? And so I told her at that first evaluation, I don't know what I want to do yet, but I know that I will want some sort of online coaching business somehow down the road. And she even suggested like an app that I could maybe do like contract work through, um, but that just didn't sound like what I wanted to do. Um, so 
that was December 2015. I knew that I wanted to do some sort of online coaching thing, didn't know exactly what it was, and I just knew that it would be something down the road that I would do. Didn't think it would take me as long as it did to start it, but fast forward to 2020, March 2020, we all know that month very well, the pandemic hit, and I... So we had to obviously shut down the studio until things were safe. Like no one knew what was going on in the world at all when this hit. Um, so immediately we shut down the studio. I think we like closed for a couple of days and then we realized we didn't know what was going to happen. So we started up Zoom boot camps, personal training clients. I think we waited a couple of weeks to start Zoom sessions because again, we had no idea that this was going to last, but boot camp we knew we had like 200 people who would probably hop onto a call on you know zoom and just do their workout from home so we started with like body weight workouts because you know we didn't know if anyone even had a set of dumbbells so we started with zoom but go from having like in 2020 like i was already fully booked with clients and i would like i said i taught a couple classes here and there when i could fit it in between sessions but go from maybe six clients a day and teaching one or two classes to now we are sharing the load of like four boot camp classes, five boot camp classes a day when there are like five instructors. So I was maybe teaching one class a day or we would kind of double it up so that we could have a day off. So go from this fully booked schedule to teaching one or two classes a day and maybe some days not even having anything on my schedule at all because we were just trying to figure out the pandemic. We had no idea what was going on. So our schedule was totally freed up. And I think almost immediately, I was like, I have to start my business now. It had been weighing on my mind. And for many reasons, I was being reminded why I wanted to be my own boss and why I wanted to have my own business someday and just like have my own coaching where I could coach my clients the way that I wanted to. Because when you work for someone, you still have to coach people the way that they want you to. Or, you know, like if I'm teaching a boot camp class, like the program is written, of course, there's flexibility or like the way that you train, um, like your style of training. But I really wanted total freedom. So as soon as the pandemic hit and I realized like maybe after like a week, I was like, oh, this is fun. We're kind of at home and whatever. I was like, this is the time. Like I had this drive and this fire within me. And I was like, I have to start this now. Whether we're home for two weeks, two months, nobody knows at this point. So I'm just going to start. And if for some reason we're back in the studio next week, I'm just going to keep kind of the momentum going as I can. Well, little did we know we'd be home for a very long time. Um, so I started my business. I decided to just Google and YouTube how to start your own business, how to start an LLC, how to get a business license, like all the logistics of it. But while I was doing that, I was also creating my very first ebook. So, well, my only ebook. Um, for now, stay tuned. <laughs> um, but I had this like idea in mind that I wanted to, I'm trying to remember. No, I think it was during the pandemic that I took the pictures for the ebook. The timeline is getting messy in my head. I'm like, did I write the ebook before I started my business? I don't know. I can't remember. But either way, my first like business project and like way of coaching was creating the Evolve Yourself Inside and Out ebook. So even back then, I was all about mindset and like incorporating mindset into your fitness routine and like getting mindset, like having those certain mindset shifts that will make your fitness routine sustainable and realistic and consistent. So Evolve Yourself Inside and Out, that was my business motto when I started in 2020, I think it was be from the inside out, be your best you. So always about the mindset. So yeah, I remember doing all the logistical stuff in 2020. I created my ebook, which I had to learn Adobe InDesign. Like again, I give myself props because it was not easy. 
and I was I felt out of my element but I just I don't know I just YouTube stuff and created this ebook and you know you run into a lot of hiccups especially with starting a business and creating something like this huge project you run into hiccups but you just take it one step at a time and before you know it you've overcome that and you're on to the next step and so it started all with that and like when I look back I don't think I'd still be working for the same studio or like be still working for someone if we never moved out of Santa Barbara and if the pandemic never hit but like I started my business because I had the time because of the pandemic so I don't know how much longer it would have taken me would it take another year would it be that same year where I was just kind of fed up with waiting so long and just told myself like hey doesn't matter what you do you just have to start I, I have no idea so silver lining of the pandemic like it, it did so many horrible things but I am grateful that I had the time to actually start my business so started with that and then ran my first challenge and at the whole this whole time I'm working at my my full-time job um so there was a little bit of conflict of interest of that that's all I'm gonna say um <laughs> but I and I never tried to poach clients or anything like that I'm just I'm not gonna get into it um but working there through the whole time so that was June 2020 we I quit that job in December 2021. So for a year and a half, I was running my business online and keeping my full-time job with private clients and the bootcamp classes. Um, so yeah, I ran my first challenge on my own because the studio I worked through, we ran fitness challenges all the time. I would run my own Facebook groups, do food journals, check in on people, like accountability, you name it, um, which I did really enjoy doing. So that was like my first after the ebook, that was like my first uh, challenge, I guess my first program um, that I created. And looking back, like it's so different than like the Ignite Your Badassery challenge that I offered this last uh, last few months. It's just so different. But again, like you learn as you go about everything when it comes to business, like marketing, you know, resources, just everything is so different than the way I ran it when I first uh started my business, but that's fine. I'm doing a time check. I have 20 minutes till my call. Um, this is going to be long. So you asked for it. You wanted to know. <laughs> um, yeah, that was my first challenge. So uh, it was a New Year's challenge, January, 2021. So that was my first one. Kept a couple of clients from that. So they were like my first online coaching clients. Shout out Katie and Melissa. They are still with me today, over two years later. Love you guys. Um, so they were my first, very first two like coaching clients that I had through Catspiration LLC. And then we decided to move, gave plenty of notice to my boss and everything. And 2021, like people were still online. We had opened up the studio, you know, running classes, but we still like... To my knowledge today, I think that same studio still operates on Zoom as well. Like you can go in person or you can do the class on Zoom. So we were still doing that in 2021. Um, so some of my clients were still on Zoom even then. Some of them came to the studio when it was safe to open up. So when I moved, I obviously like I am not someone who's going to be dishonest or disloyal or anything like that. So I gave all of my clients plenty of notice that I was moving and told them I obviously understand if they decide to stay with my, you know, previous company and I would be more than happy to set them up with another trainer. Uh, I had someone who was kind of going to be taking my place for clients that were, you know, needing a trainer once I left. Um, so obviously some people stayed totally fine. I totally understand that. Some of them were at this uh, training through that company before I even started there. So like, I totally understand uh, them wanting to support the company or just wanting to be in person, like hundred percent. And like I said, like some of my clients were a lot older, like not saying they couldn't, you know, I, like, I think one of my clients didn't even have a computer. So like how, and he had a flip phone. So, you know, he's not going to train online. Like I understand that. Um, but I did have a few clients who wanted to come with me, uh, a couple of them who 
weren't even in the studio, even when we we're safely back in there, they just preferred working out from home. Like, especially they worked from home, they would go into a spare bedroom, they had some weights, they had a bike or some, you know, resistance bands, whatever. And so even up until December, 2021, they were still on Zoom with me when I was in the studio. So for them, if they wanted to continue with me, it was an easy decision. Um, so I am very grateful for the ones who did come with me, um, even though I gave them the choice. And I am very grateful for that. Still training them today, almost a year and a half later. We've been in Ben for almost a year and a half. And yeah, so, so grateful. But as far as my business goes, like if you're watching this, you probably follow me on Instagram. You see the programs I put out. The Next Chapter Evolution was my first big program. And if you've been watching my stories lately and posts lately, I am revamping it into a six month one-on-one -on -one coaching program to dive so deep so that it is customized for each individual. I want to really solidify everything that people are learning in the evolution and apply it like specifically to, to them, give them extra one-on-one -on -one coaching so that they can overcome their specific struggles. Like you can still do that in the current version, but I wanna dive even deeper. Like I wanna help them even more. So that's what I'm call feeling called to do now on my, my business journey. Um, but the evolution was my first big program. So I ran the challenge, New Year's challenge, January, 2021. By October 2021, I had launched, or I had, yeah, by September 2021, I had launched, no, 2022. I don't know. No, September 2021, because I was still living in Santa Barbara when the first round of the evolution, God, that seems like so long ago, the first round of the evolution happened. It was October to December. So that was my first big program. And then I have had the First Step Kickstarter, which is like a prequel to the evolution. Um, I have launched my strongest self. I have big things in the work. I am in the works. I am just loving creating my business. And if you have been following along with my journey since even like a year ago, I am completely taking the reins of my business. I am showing up more authentically. I'm not doing what I should do. I'm checking in with what I want to do, how I want to coach my clients, um, what I want to offer, how I want to launch a program. So I am trying to be as authentic as possible because if you don't enjoy what you're doing or like running your business in a way that's not enjoyable to you, what are you even doing? Like you're probably not going to make as much money as you want. You're probably not going to attract the clients that you want. You're probably not going to be fulfilled in your daily life. So I am really working with my coach last year. Like shout out to my coach, Ashley. I love you. I, I wouldn't be where I am today without her. Like the, like I said, looking back at like the very first challenge I run, ran, like I'm so proud of myself for doing that. But like the way I ran the Ignite Your Badassery challenge, like just in every single way, marketing, the actual program resources, like everything it is night and day. So I am so grateful to my coach, Ashley. We've been working together on my business for over, over a year and a half, I think. So, um, love that. But yeah, I'm just trying to show up authentically because if I'm not having fun with it, like I'm not going to be coaching clients in the way that I want to, and that feels right. And then my clients are going to suffer as a result of that. And even like, not even clients, like if I'm not putting content out there that is authentic to me, who am I really helping? So I'm trying to just show up authentically and have freaking fun with it. Like I am having so much fun getting out of my comfort zone and just being my goofy self and just embracing that and just letting that shine through. And it will probably get even weirder because I'm still holding back a little bit. I'm gonna call myself out right now. Um, but yeah, I'm having so much fun in my business. So this is me. This is me from 2010 to 2023. I freaking love my business. I wouldn't trade it for anything. I cannot wait to see 
where I grow from here. And this video will probably coincide with my 1000th post on Instagram, which to be honest, I've deleted a few of like those really old ones, but I drafted a post yesterday on my, that will be my 1000th post. And I talk about like kind of my journey of starting my Instagram and where I am today. And I am just so proud of myself. Like I, looking back at that, like young woman who was just trying to feel out where she might go on this fitness journey and like possibly some sort of coaching journey, but totally unsure. And knowing that she didn't want to sell someone else's products or work for someone else her whole life. And now I'm here the last three years owning and running my own business and I could not be more grateful. So that's me. That's me in a nutshell. I don't know if it's a nutshell. That is 41 minutes. Um, so yes, I had someone who on, I think I put like a YouTube video suggestion box on Instagram and someone that I've known like since 2009 or something, he put in the box, like, I feel like one day I woke up and you were a personal trainer and a vegan and I have no idea how that happened. Like, what? when did that happen? Um, so I thought that was funny. And I'm, it's too long to get... Vegan, veganism is another story. But I'm coming up on my five years? No, four years? I don't know. That's another story. But um, I was like, yeah, I guess for people who I knew, like, in college, who, you know, may not know my whole story now... Um, or people who are just now following me on Instagram and have no idea who I am or how I came to be a business owner and a coach, um, then yeah, this is my story. So I, I'm i not going to say I hope because I just talked about that with my coach. I hope this was enjoyable. No, I know this was enjoyable. Um, so you learned a little bit more about me today and yeah, this will go up around the time of my 1000 posts post. So I am celebrating that landmark and I cannot wait to look back on my 2000th post and see where I've come since then. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for taking an interest in me and my business and you got me out of my comfort zone a little bit talking about myself for 42 minutes. So thank you for that and I will see you in the next video.